Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be talking about old school TIG welding. Just hooking up an air-cooled scratch start TIG welding torch to an old stick welding machine. All right, today we're going old school, and uh, I really mean old school. I traded years ago, horse traded for a rectifier that you could hook a buzz box, AC buzz box welder up to and get DC current out of. And so when you got DC current, if you got a DC stick welder, you can do some crude TIG welding. And uh, in fact, a whole lot of TIG welding, even today, is done with just a DC current power source and a scratch start uh, TIG torch, usually with a valve on it so you can cut the argon on and off when you want. And how that works is when you, uh, you hook us, you basically have your stinger that holds a stick rod, you have DC negative current, you clamp the stinger onto the tab on the end of this, on the other end of this uh, TIG torch. The other hose hooks into an argon flow meter, which can be run two, three hundred foot of hose to a tank somewhere. It's very portable. You can be up ten bucks high on a scaffold welding or whatever. All you need is a TIG torch, flow meter, and a lead and a ground. So when you get ready to weld, you have your you have your machine preset. You're not going to weld razor blades with this kind of welding. Uh, although you can do more than you would think you would do sometimes, but you have your machine preset on the amperage, get ready to weld, you hook your current up to the tab on this thing, you turn your argon on, set your flow meter, you light off, either you rock the, rock the uh, tungsten end, touch it and, and pull back, or just scratch it like a match, and you weld, and when you get done, you, you trail out and snap the arc out. Now you're always gonna leave, you're always gonna leave a oxidized gray place, it's kinda unavoidable, but on some things like uh, piping, you can get, get away with it. You just come up on the wall, snap out, file that little area off, wire brush it, and it all cleans up good. Many, many x-ray wells are done this way. So this little rectifier here, I horse traded four years ago. and never I used it one time to build some kind of part, parts washer out of 16, 18 gauge steel. It worked then. It's been through a flood. The whole, that little AC Lincoln buzz box has been soaked underwater. And uh, this is the first time we turned it on since it's uh, been through the flood and uh, works, works like a champ. So uh, the little Lincoln AC tombstone welders are uh, rough and ready. And uh, probably they've probably sold more of those than any other one welding machine in the history of mankind. And there's a reason for it. They're just tough. And so uh, we've got some crude TIG welding going on. I'm going to weld some sheet metal here. I'm going to scratch start and uh, weld a little bit try to get a try to get a decent arc shot if I can reach around the camera I'm feeling a little rough uh, it's just it's been a, it's been a whole week since I had the wisdom teeth out but man knock me down so uh, but you know gotta get the gotta get the video out right I'll do what I can we hope it works someone had a lot of time on their hands making this rectifier. What it is a cart. It's a cart made to hold a buzz box on the bottom and uh, some heavy aluminum channel and some diodes, heat sink, a bunch of wiring to connect it all together. I'm not an electrician so I can't really explain to you exactly how all that works. But I know diodes are kind of like check valves. They, they, uh, they stop the flow of uh, electricity in one direction so they, they're able to convert AC to DC. And so the, the buzz box goes on this side one leads your ground, one's your electrode, and they go through. The current goes through the rectifier, comes out the other side as DC, and uh, these two leads. One of them hooks into your TIG torch. Just uh, if you've got already a DC stick welder, you don't need that rectifier portion. This is a Miller Thunderbolt. It's a pretty common uh, low-end DC stick welder. Uh, that works just fine too. But basically, the stick lead will just clamp on to the power cable of a of an air-cooled TIG torch. And then the only thing else you need is uh, is a flow meter coming off an argon tank, and this line just hooks in right to the bottom of the flow meter. So it's just as simple as that. One line clamps off to your lead, DC electrode negative. The other the other line on the torch plugs into your flow meter on the on the, your argon bottle, and now you've got a TIG welder. It's crude. There's no amperage adjustment. There's no on off. It's you got live current on that on that tungsten all the time, but you can. TIG weld. You have to scratch start or 
rock the TIG, uh, rock the electrode in, touch off, and then pull back like this. But um, if if all you've got is a stig welder, and you don't have a MIG, and you want to weld some sheet metal, um, you can get if you can get an air cooled TIG torch and a flow meter and an argon bottle, pretty cheap. You're uh, you're off to the races with uh, a crude TIG welder. It's not ideal. Tacking like this. Every tack kind of takes a little bit of that point of the electrode off a little bit. So eventually, after two or three starts, you're dealing with a uh, you're dealing with a less than needle sharp electrode. But um, you, you learn to live with it. Now, if you got backing like this, you can light up on the backing, even on thin thin metal, and uh, not melt the edges away. It gives you an extra few seconds to position your uh, filler metal, so you can. Uh, pull into the corner off the backing and then add filler metal and uh, get going. So you can see the arc is relatively smooth. It's just that you don't have any any uh, control. You can't uh, post flow shield the bead when you're done. You can't taper off to prevent leaving a crater hole. All those best practice things. A foot pedal is just a whole lot better. You're going to want to get a foot pedal if you've already this is strictly this is strictly um, an option if you've already got a stick welder uh, of getting getting your feet wet with TIG welding, being able to do some TIG welding without spending a fortune. Because you can get a TIG torch, uh, air-cooled TIG torch off eBay, pretty cheap, and uh, a flow meter and an argon bottle. You're going to have to have an argon bottle eventually, whether or not you upgrade anyway. So uh, that's kind of a wash. And so for a few hundred dollars, you can uh, you can convert your stick welder to a TIG welder. Now, if you've got a gap like this, you especially need some backing, and it helps to light up on the backing and then add rod really quickly and get that going but you say I've got I've, it doesn't take very long to figure out the amperage settings that you need I've got it set on about 60 amps on the buzz box which is going to give me a little bit less amperage on the DC output side so I've probably got about 50 amps going here and uh, it's close enough to make the adjustments with travel speed and uh, doesn't give me anything to write home about but it does give me a decent uh, crude TIG welder if all I've got is a stick welder and I can TIG weld a tank, if I'm building a tank that needs to be uh, watertight, a parts washer or something like that, uh, I'd rather do this than stick weld it. Now, probably a 115 volt MIG would be would be the way to go, but you know, this is just a uh, this is just a demo on crude stick uh, crude TIG welding. You light up, you snap out, and also you can use backing and, and weld right off onto the backing and snap out. Again, the arc itself is pretty smooth. You, you can make up your adjustments. You can see it's not way out of out of hand on the uh, on the heat control. Also, you can see a crater hole. That would be a problem. You got to always make sure to to light up and overlap and, and fill those remelt those craters if you are building something that needs to be watertight. There, I try to strike off like a match. It's it's, it's uh, I'm a little out of practice on the old scratch start. I've done quite a bit of this, but it's been over 20 years. You kind of uh, kind of spoil to the foot pedal now. It gives you something decent. It just really makes you want a foot pedal, is what it does. Now, again, this is this is some this is an option that you'd only want to do if you already had a stick welder. You wouldn't want to go out and buy a used stick welder and then buy a torch, buy a flow meter, and all that kind of stuff. But by, the, by the time you got done, you could have bought a, a brand new uh, uh, inverter power source like this This one here. This is about $650. And uh, the reason I say that is because when you buy this uh, an inverter like this, a lot of times you get uh, foot pedal, flow meter, stick electrode, accessories, you know, already kind of thrown in the deal. 650 bucks for all this stuff, and, and all that stuff adds up really quickly. And you're going to want a foot pedal. So, but if you've already got an old stick welder laying around and want to get your feet wet, it's just an option. All right, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.